Hey everybody, Charlie from Airplane Academy here. Today we're gonna to be talking about seven airplanes that you can own and fly for about $40 a day. Now that might sound a little unrealistic to you, but I promise at the end I'm gonna show you the math and all the assumptions behind how that really can be doable. So I hope you'll stick around. A lot of other channels tend to present this same information just in terms of purchase price. So here's airplanes you can own for 20 grand or 30 grand. And while that might be somewhat true, that's really just the purchase price. That doesn't take into consideration all the other very real expenses that you'll incur when owning and operating an airplane. And so I wanted to take a bit of a different approach on this and boil it down to dollars per day where you can own and reasonably fly your very own airplane. My goal in this is to kind of help debunk the myth that aviation is prohibitively expensive. We just can't pursue it because it costs too much. And yeah, it can get pretty expensive, but it, there is an area of aviation that doesn't have to be prohibitively expensive. And there's seven airplanes that I think are a perfect fit for how and why that can be the case. So let's jump in and start with the first airplane. Airplane number one, the Cessna 150. The Cessna 150 is the fifth most produced civilian airplane ever built with nearly 24,000 made. Cessna stopped producing the 150 in 1985 and hasn't successfully focused on the two seat market since. Because of this, the 150 and the 152, covered next, are some of the only true bargain buys available for purchase today. They won't carry much, but are small, simple, and easy to maintain. Aircraft number one plus, the Cessna 152. The main difference in the 152 from the 150 is an extra 10 horsepower in the upgraded engine, an increase in useful load of around 100 pounds, and flaps that extend 40 degrees instead of 30. All in all, nearly 8,000 were produced. Interestingly, there was a model of the 152 called the Aerobat that was approved for certain aerobatic maneuvers and could handle up to positive 6 Gs and negative 3 G forces. That's pretty impressive for a humble little bird. Aircraft number two, the Cessna 172. The Cessna 172 Skyhawk is the most produced civilian aircraft ever built, with more than 44,000 made, and they're still in production today. Models have progressed quite a bit, and the specs of the original 1956 model are considerably different from models produced today. They've changed the engines over the years, and have even experimented with diesel fuel engines. Because of its simple design, forgiving flight characteristics, and straightforward maintenance, the 172 is one of the most widely used and recognized airplanes in the world. Aircraft number three, the Cessna 175. The Cessna 175 Skylark was produced starting in 1958 and was meant to fill the gap between the 172 and the 182 from a cost and speed perspective. All in all, about 2100 were built. It was a good design on paper with higher airspeed and good short field performance but in practice wasn't compelling enough to continue producing the 175 alongside the 172 and the 182, but there's still a pretty good used market for these aircraft today. Aircraft number four, the Cherokee 140. The Piper Cherokee has a long history with many different models and variations produced. Overall, about 32,000 PA-28s have been made since 1960, but there's a particular model within those produced that we're focused on here, the Cherokee 140. It was produced between 1964 and 1977, and despite being the smallest version in the PA-28 lineage, it proved to be a very reliable and affordable two-seat airplane. It's a classic small Piper aircraft and still maintains a very active buying market today. Aircraft number five, the Piper Tri-Pacer. The Tri-Pacer is essentially a tricycle gear version of the tailwheel Piper Pacer, and in the 1950s and 60s, around 7,600 were built which was nearly seven times more than the Pacer. The tricycle gear was a big hit in the market at the time, as more novice pilots found it much easier to control. The Tri-Pacer is easy to recognize with its stubby appearance and short wings, ultimately earning the nickname the Flying Milk Stool. It's a nostalgic, iconic, and very affordable airplane to own and fly today. Aircraft number six, the Grumman Tiger. Produced by Grumman starting in 1974, the Tiger was an improvement on its predecessors, the Traveler and the Cheetah. Ultimately around 1300 were built. If you research or talk to Tiger owners, they all tend to say the same thing, bang for your buck. The Tiger is affordable to operate and insure, cruises reasonably fast, and is easy to maintain. Aircraft number seven, the Beechcraft Musketeer. In the early 1960s, Beechcraft created a slightly smaller, more affordable version of the Bonanza, arguably one of the most successful airplanes of all time, and named it the Beechcraft Musketeer. It's not overly fast, but is known for its room inside the cabin, 
stable flying characteristics, and affordability. Around 4,500 were built, and the naming conventions of each updated model along its 20-year history is admittedly a bit confusing and includes the Musketeer, Custom, Sport, Sundowner, Super 3, Super R, and Sierra. Each model has its pros and cons, but as a whole, the Musketeer line remains affordable and well-recognized in the aviation community today. It's no bonanza, but you'll still be in a Beechcraft. So those are seven airplanes that I think are really realistic to own and fly for just about 40 bucks a day. Now I should mention, if you're at all considering buying an airplane or you're curious, or maybe you're, you're seriously considering, you're about to do it, I highly recommend that you watch this video. It should be in this corner, I think, whenever we post it. Um, that's gonna cover the methodology that I was taught uh, when considering what kind of airplane to buy. Because aircraft are kind of like houses or cars in that when you ask someone, hey, how much does a house cost? Well, it depends, right? It depends what kind of house you want, how many rooms do you want, how many bathrooms do you want, where do you want to live? There's so many different considerations and it's the very same thing with airplanes, but you just need to know what questions to be able to ask to determine uh, what kind of airplane is going to be best for you because there's a whole wide spectrum and just your budget is not going to be the best indicator of what type of airplane to get. There's other questions you need to ask. They were taught to me. It's how I identified that the airplane behind me was going to be the perfect first airplane for me. So go watch that video. I hope it'll help you learn something um, and decide what kind of airplane to buy. So anyways, but back to the seven airplanes that we just covered. Let's dive into the math and the assumptions behind how $40 a day really can be realistic. Before we start, keep in mind that these are assumptions. They're estimates. For every person that might say these are too low, there's another person that might say it's too high. These numbers are based on my own experience and research. If you have a different view, that's fine, but keep it nice in the comments section. Aircraft costs are broken into two categories, fixed and variable. Fixed costs you have to pay whether or not you even fly the airplane, while variable costs are incurred in relation to how much you fly. Fixed costs include the loan payment, annual inspection, insurance, and hangar. Variable costs include fuel, oil, and miscellaneous. Some people choose to add in reserves for engine overhaul, as most engines need to be overhauled or replaced every 2,000 hours or so, but I choose to not really view this as a daily expense. For one, if you fly 100 hours per year, that means that 2,000 hours on the engine would take 20 years, and even with a $20,000 overhaul, that still amounts to about $2.73 per day or even about $5 a day if you buy the airplane with a thousand hours already on the engine. But by that point, you've likely paid the airplane off and could refinance to fund the overhaul and continue on with your payments as you have been doing. But if you're intent on including this expense in the model, there are things you can do to reduce your expenses to keep the overall total to $40 per day. It's close enough to where I feel okay leaving it off for the purposes of this model. The first fixed expense is the payment. Here we're assuming a purchase price in the $25,000 to $35,000 range, for which you need to put down about 20% to get a 6% interest rate for 15 years. That's an annual cost of about $2,500, or about $677 per day. Second is the annual inspection cost. This is the assumption that probably has the most variability because it greatly depends on geography and how much they find in your aircraft that needs fixing or replacing that year. But here we put $3,000. Some annuals might cost considerably less or considerably more, but for small airplanes like the one I've been discussing, I think it's realistic based on my research, experience, and input from other pilots during the making of this video. Insurance depends on a lot of factors, but a lot of it is the value of the airplane, number of seats it has, the average insurance record of the model of that airplane, and to a certain extent, your experience as a pilot. $800 is a safe estimate here, and in many cases would probably be even less than that. Hangar expenses also vary greatly based on geography. In Dallas, Texas, I pay about $540 per month, while in St. Francis, Kansas, hangers are 50 bucks a month. I split the difference here at $250 per month. That brings total fixed expenses per day at around $25, which is slightly more than half of the $40 a day we're going for. Variable expenses change in relation to how much you fly, the most obvious of which is fuel. The average general aviation aircraft gets flown about 100 hours a year, so I assumed eight hours per month for round numbers. Gallons per hour ranges by airplane and other factors, but eight and a half gallons is about the middle ground of the airplanes we just covered. Currently, the national average for 100 low lead aviation fuel is about $5 a gallon. Put these together and you get $4,080 per year, or $11.18 per day on fuel. 
Oil changes for these airplanes are commonly called for every six months or 50 engine hours, whichever comes first. At 100 hours per year, that would mean at the six month mark exactly. The price here varies and you can even do the oil changes yourself, but I figured $250 for labor and oil. They change your oil at annual, so we only need to do this once halfway through the year. Last is miscellaneous. This could include apps like ForeFlight, GPS data updates, and other miscellaneous gear you might get throughout the year. $1,000 per year is just a few dollars per day. Total this up and variable expenses are about $15 a day, assuming you're flying about eight hours per month. Conveniently, this totals up to exactly $40 a day. It's all an estimate though, and some years will be a little more, some might be a little less. Here on paper though, it's doable. So there you have it, some airplanes that are about 40 bucks a day to own and fly. Again, my whole goal here is just to show that aviation doesn't have to be prohibitively expensive. So if you're a pilot, you're thinking about becoming a pilot, I hope you'll continue along that journey. Uh, the money side doesn't have to hold you back because there is an area of aviation that is affordable. And so I hope you'll continue to pursue it. I also really hope that you'll subscribe to this channel as we continue to produce and promote content uh, that tries to further aviation. So thanks so much. We'll see you guys in the next video.